This is Money, Motivation, and Mike, and I am your host, Michael Wainwright. In charge of the show, a new title for Jason, the whole show. You're now in charge of the whole show. <laughs> is Jason Wright. And hello to you, world. This is the show that will change your life. You can contact us at info at mx3.vip and find all of our content at mx 3 vip or on our youtube channel youtube.com slash at mx3 podcast and don't forget to hit the like subscribe and icon bell to get notified of all of our content which comes out every monday morning around nine o'clock well it is march and there's a couple of things that people think of when it's march i think of rain Mm. and i am a sports person and i still think of rain i think of spring training but most people think of March Madness. And March Madness actually is only second behind the Super Bowl, Jason, with viewings and interest. And it is, it is a big three-week tournament that goes on, and that's what we're going to discuss today. But before we get into that, we, we, we have not talked about some of our uh, analytics and statistics over the last couple of shows. And when we sit down here to start our show and start recording and getting ourselves prepared we had 7195 subscribers on our youtube channel before i said this is money motivation and mike we were already up to 7223 subscribers we are we are once again elated happy new year episode which was episode night uh number 80 was it 80 80 happy new year episode 80 has had 28,412 views. And in the last 28 days, we've gained 2,349 subscribers. I guess we need to put Happy New Year as a title <laughs> of every one of our shows. There you go. If we're talking about July 4th, it needs to be July 4th, Happy New Year. Because obviously, one of the way people find you, is it correct, Jason? They, they Google Happy New Year and they find your show. Or they Google baseball or, or something, Dallas Cowboys, and they find your show. Gotcha. And that's how, that's how we now have representation in six continents. And we're working on Antarctica. But we're going to have to pay somebody to move there before we can get a participant. <laughs> <laughs> March Madness. Now, now in, in the field that we're in, I consider March Madness to be income tax season. And the March Madness that goes on, uh, for March 15th, as we've talked about many times, which is the first day to file your income tax returns. And then after that 15th, we get flooded with individual stuff. And everyone I'm expecting to get their tax return, uh, definitely by April 15th, but maybe even by April 1st, which, hey, we are uh, 34 years later, we're still meeting the needs. March Madness, the Division One men's basketball tournament, and I, I can recall the very first, the very first game I ever watched of of basketball was the championship game in 1982 between the North Carolina Tar Heels and the Georgetown Hoyas, and lo and behold, there was a freshman playing that day named Michael Jordan. And North Carolina didn't win the game. Patrick Yuma's on the other team. James Worthy, Sam Perkins. It was a great game to be um, to be to be watching. Or right, and and of course, when you watch that game, it's kind of downhill from there with all the people in that game. That was also the first game that ever had two number one seeds playing each other for the championship. So. Branded as March Madness, a single elimination tournament played in the United States to determine the men's college basketball national championship in Division One basketball NCAA. Um, mostly played in March. I would assume that there has been a game or two. Let's see. It's starting this week. Um, then we're going to be going to... Yeah, so the Final Four, which is on a Saturday... And the championship game, I believe that's going to be like April 4th or something. So those first, those last three games, starting with 68 teams, those final four teams will meet the first weekend of March and, and commencing on Monday, Monday night. But before the tournament size has, was, was 
at where it's at now at 68 teams as little as eight teams made up the field once upon a time which in 1939 that year's winner was oregon oregon has not won a men's basketball championship since and i'm going to go through how this field has expanded throughout the years only one time has the tournament been canceled which was 2020 as we all know the pandemic now i did not remember this until i started doing my research and i was really surprised with some of the uh, some of the facts some of the information of march madness because i seem to know a whole lot about sports and i was i was taught and and learned a lot by researching march madness and and as jason and i were talking off the air where is basketball and in this particular case uh, college basketball on my radar well it's probably down in the basketball is probably fourth college basketball is around sixth in in my repertoire of sports knowledge so i guess it was my day to get to learn some things but 37 different schools has won the tournament to date NC, uh, NC, uh, UCLA, excuse me, UCLA has the most at 11 championships, and their coach, John Wooden, won 10 of them. University of Kentucky has won eight. North Carolina has won six. Duke and the University of Connecticut, UConn, uh, and Indiana, University of Indiana, have won five. University of Kansas has won four. Villanova has three. There are seven programs with two and 23 teams 23 other teams have won the national championship game at least one time and dating all the way back to 1939 when ohio state coach harold Olson had the idea of coming up with this tournament and that is where the ncaa march madness tournament all started in ohio state in columbus ohio for that matter so from 1939 to 1950, the NCAA tournament consisted of only eight teams. Back in those days, they didn't play a whole lot of games, but consisted of only eight teams, which selected from geographical districts. Multiple conferences were considered part of each district, such as the Missouri Valley and back then the Big Seven. Now, as we know, the Big 12 was the Big Eight, Back then, it was the Big Seven, and at one time, it was the Big Six. So, the Big Seven in one district, Missouri Valley in the Big Seven in one district, and the Southern and Southeastern Conferences in another. I don't even remember there being a Southern Conference. Obviously, the SEC today is the marquee conference, uh, especially when it comes to, well, a lot of sports. But definitely, we think of it in, in the football rim of things. So, in 1950, when the NCAA suggested... Uh, that we go and expand to an additional set of teams. And in this particular year, we went to 32. So, no, excuse me, 16. 53, they went to 22. And then 75, they went to 32. But during this year, the the schools were not happy with the way things were working. So you could have a non-ranked team Let's say up in the the Northwest, you could have a non-ranked team make the tournament because they were doing it with, uh, geographically. And then you could have, let's say, number one and number two, Duke in North Carolina. They're 20, 25 miles, maybe 30 from each other. They're, uh, they're campuses. One of those teams may not make it because they were in the same conference, same region, uh, for, for that matter, probably the same county, and I'm not for sure of that. But you get my you get my point. So we'll take in 1950 Kentucky. They were the third ranked team in the country. The fifth ranked team that year was North Carolina State. Neither one of those teams made the tournament. So they, the NCAA, elected to let them two teams have a playoff game for a bid. Kentucky refused, believing they should have been given the bid as the higher ranked team anyway. But this is along the lines of what I'm talking about and that early era of where they went geographically that that obviously created a lot of controversy along the way. And then the field was expanded to 16 in 1951, adding two additional districts 
and six spots for at-large teams. Conferences could only have one team in the tournament. All right. Conferences could only have one team in the tournament, which ended up being the champion. We'll take the we'll take the Big 12 this year. They had eight teams. And we know the ACC has always had lots of teams with Duke and North Carolina, North Carolina State, and on and on and on with that with that particular conference. And back in these days, uh, those days, excuse me, you can only have one team from your conference making the tournament. NCAA doubled the field, as I say, in 61, and then NCAA with its NIT tournament. See, we have another tournament. I don't know if you knew that either, Jason. The NIT, the National Invitational Tournament. And that is for basically team 69 on down. And and back in the 50s and 60s, there were teams that were highly ranked but would not play in the NCAA tournament because of the unfairness, and they chose to go with the NIT. 1953, as I said, the tournament was expanded to 22 teams, and it added a fifth round. See, back in the original days, there were only three rounds. Now we're up to the fifth round with 10 teams receiving a bid by the regional semifinals making another round for us to get into here and 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 the team going to 20 the, the tournament going to 25 teams over the next two decades so it continues to go uh, there was another big start in 1971 when two major changes over the course of the early 70s led to the NCAA becoming the permanent postseason tournament uh, for college basketball and like I say NIT was right there with them for a long time The NCAA added a rule in 1971 that banned teams who declined an invitation to the NCAA tournament from participating in other postseason tournaments. And this was in response to a previous year when Marquette, uh, eighth-ranked Marquette, declined the invitation and played in the NIT. So even as early as the 70s, you still had a lot of rebuttal about NCAA versus NIT, where I'm going to play, the fairness, the unfairness, etc. And not until 1985 did the tournament expand to 64 teams, uh, eliminating buys and play-ins and all these type of things. Um, until 2001, the first and second rounds occurred at two sites in each region, which now that has been changed as well. So along those lines, as you can see, not until... 1985 did we get to where we are and then uh, and then of course in 2001 the field got expanded from 64 to 65 teams now what did that do well the 65th team didn't get in the tournament they were always mad so we're gonna have 64 and 65 play to be the 16th seed in one of the regions and then what happens well then what about 66 you know this can go on and on and on Uh, forever which is going to lead us up into something here momentarily so starting in 2004 the the selection committee revealed the overall rankings among the number one seeds based on these rankings the regions were paired so that the number one overall seeds would play the number four seeds in the national semifinals if both teams made it to the final four this was to prevent the top two teams from playing each other in the regional or et cetera before the final. And I've, I've mentioned Duke and North Carolina, and there have been two powerhouses in men's college basketball for a long time, and, and their campuses being so close together, they would have to play each other in the same region. And there's been many years that Duke and North Carolina have been ranked 1-2 at some points throughout, throughout the year. In 2010, there was speculation about increasing the tournament size to as many as 128 teams. I mean, that's getting real close to how many NCAA Division I uh, uh, schools there are in the United States. On April 1st, 2010, the NCAA announced it was looking at expanding to 96 teams for 2011. They had decided the demographics, the locations, et cetera, may not be strong enough for 128 teams. But remember, in 2021, they played all the games in the state of Indiana. So that kind of blows that one out of the water. In 2011, when they're talking about expanding here to 96 teams, 
And right before all that came about, three weeks later, the NCAA announced a new television contract with CBS Turner that expanded the field to 68 teams instead of 96 starting, as I say, in 2011. So what does that mean, Jason? Once again, money wins out. They did not want to go you go to you go to ninety six teams, you're gonna have a powerhouse playing against, let's say, a cupcake. Then that, that game's gonna turn into a thirty point blowout. And who's gonna watch that game? Right. So then the network's gonna have to go and cover that game. They've got the contract and you gotta go cover the number one team and it's not gonna be a competitive game and by halftime people are gonna be tuning out and moving over to something else. So that's that's where money ruled out again it might have been best for the players best for the universities but not best for the money not best for the networks the people who write the checks typically make all the decisions and and that's exactly what happened in my opinion in 2011 2016 the ncaa introduced a new ncaa march madness logo for the tournament now the the logo that i see now see i thought that logo had been around for a long time uh but but it had not the the logo they have right now is only been out since 2016 so so very very interesting now i'm going to give you some uh, some stuff on how many how many teams there were and how many rounds there 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 was and is uh as we speak so back in 1939 like i say only eight teams and those were at large. You know, those were invitations. You you could not um, um, go buy your way in because you were a big brand. They only played three rounds, obviously. Eight, four, two, three rounds. Uh, anybody can figure that one up. And 51, like we talked about, uh, uh, went to 16 teams in four rounds. And 53 went to 22 teams in five rounds. And the five rounds stuck around for a couple of decades. Uh, until 1975, when we went to 32 teams, we still had those five rounds. 1979, went to 40 teams, six rounds. And also uh, in, in 1981, they went to 48 teams. And then in 83, went to 52 teams. And then in 84, went to 53 teams. That's going to be another one of those play-in deals where number 53 is mad because they didn't get in. Well, let's expand it. And at that time, it was seven rounds. And then in 85, finally, 64 teams and six rounds, which continued to 2001. When I say we went from 64 to 65 teams, had the play-in, which is basically where it's been up until 2011 at 68 teams, so forth and so on. Now, I talked about how some of these teams with the the UCLA's and the Kentucky's and North Carolina's and all all those teams that have won multiple, multiple championships. And I also talked about Oregon winning the 1939 championship. I want you to listen to some of these. Wisconsin won the 1941. You would never think of Wisconsin winning anything. Wyoming won in 1943. UTEP won in 1966. Now, that was also during that time when UTEP, I believe, was called um, Western Texas, West Texas, one of those teams where they beat Kentucky in the championship where the legendary Pat Riley was on that Kentucky team, the guy who ended up, who ended up coaching the Lakers for so many years. And, oh, by the way, another little tidbit, Pat Riley was drafted by the Dallas Cowboys as a tight end from the University of Kentucky. No way. Ninth, tenth round, somewhere in there. Now, the 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 biggest name here on this list was the nineteen fifty champion, City College of New York. <laughs> CCNY, City College of New York. Now, let me compare that for a minute to you. All right, nineteen fifty. I mean, sports is going. The Heisman Trophy is rocking and rolling. Things are happening, and a city college. Yet it be New York City wins the national championship. 1950 college football champion was the Oklahoma Sooners. So you compare that to where where that is with the, with the basketball. That that's that's crazy. So nevertheless, the last time we had a single winner 
was Baylor. That was their first time that they had won. Uh, here, here's some interesting stuff. Kentucky has made 61 appearances. Their first appearance was in 1942, 19 th- not 1939. And, of course, they're in it this year. North Carolina has 53 appearances. Their first year was 41. And Kansas has 50 appearances. Their first year was 40. The streaks. How long has your team been going to the tournament year after year after year? Kansas, from 1990 to 2017, 28 years. North Carolina, 1975 to 2001, 27 years. Michigan State, 26 years. Gonzaga, and I know they've came on the scene. Gonzaga is our longest running, well, Michigan State too. Michigan State and Gonzaga are both right now uh, on streaks uh, of of 25 years. Arizona and Duke, um, 25 years as well, but there was from 85 to 2009. The streaks right now are Michigan State and Gonzaga. And Duke also had a streak of 24 that ended in 2019. Harvard, the longest tenure from one appearance to the next is Harvard. They appeared in 1946 and not again till 2012, 66 years. Now, this one was um, a little mind-boggling to me. Iowa State. Iowa State plays in the Big 12. Big 12 had the most uh, most teams in the tournament in 2024 here. And Iowa State has become a major basketball area, college, whatever you say. Iowa State went 41 years without an appearance from 1944 to 1985. Okay, And you think about just a couple of years ago, Baylor won the national championship. They went 38 years without making an appearance. Oregon, who won the first ever championship in 1939, went 34 years without making an appearance. And this is is also mind-boggling as well. Georgetown, since I've been watching college basketball, Georgetown has always been a power. They went 32 years without making an appearance, which is intriguing to me uh making the tournament the 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 64 that first weekend that's that's big time stuff you got games all day and all night virtually from thursday morning till sunday night and then you get to some unique names and by the way jason these names are copyrighted sweet 16 elite eight final four those names are copyrighted they belong to the ncaa so if you want to make up some sweet 16 shirts you want to make a shirt Matter of fact, your daughter's about to have a birthday, and she's going to be 16. Indeed. If you go make a shirt up and put Sweet 16 on it, you are legally obligated to pay the NCAA. So you need to think about that before you hand out all those shirts you had made up. <laughs> <laughs> Consult with your, with your legal team before you do that. Indeed, I will. Most wins in the NCAA tournament, North Carolina, 131, excuse me, and Kentucky has 131 as well. Um, Duke 118 and the top 10 the last one is Villanova with 71 now if you're in the top 10 and you have 71 and the and the the top team North Carolina and Kentucky teams are at 131 you think about that that's how dominating those teams have been and when you think of college basketball there there to me there's five programs and these five programs just happen to be the only teams that have won over 100 games North Carolina, Kentucky, Duke, UCLA, and Kansas. Kansas won 111 games in the tournament. And number six is Michigan State with 71. They've won 40. There's 40 game difference between five and six. So you've got your top tier teams, and then it falls off, and it falls off fast. Mm. And I don't know how many number 10 has won because I didn't look that up. More intriguing, interesting stuff. And, of course, it's going to be about those five teams. North Carolina has made the semifinals 21 times. UCLA's made it 19. Kentucky, Duke have made it 17. And Kansas has made 16. NCAA National Championship game appearances. UCLA, 13. North Carolina and Kentucky have 12. Duke has 11. And Kansas has 10. I mean, they're just battling it out all the time. And, of course, they're the, they're the big boys on the campus with the wins as well, uh, on and on and on. So good stuff. 
Um, and as, as I already said, there's only been eight times that the number one seeds have played each other in the in the championship game. Now, what I mean by that is, you know, there's upsets all the time. They they should copyright upset because this tournament's all about upsets. Um, threes beat fourteens. You know, twos have beat fifteens. I think there's only been one sixteen, and I don't know that for a fact. But there's only been one sixteen that um, has been beaten by uh, uh, beat the number one team. And those eight times where the number one seeds have met, you guessed it, North Carolina was in four of them. Um, Duke was in a couple. Gonzaga. Gonzaga has been in a couple as well. But North Carolina has been in four of the eight teams where the number one seeds. Uh, they played Georgetown, like, the, like I told you, the very first team game I've ever seen or ever saw. Uh, Michigan. Uh, Illinois and Gonzaga in 2017. Illinois was in 2005. And by the way, North Carolina won all four of those games when they played a number one team in the national championship. Very interesting. Duke has won one against number one teams. And Gonzaga, which I just mentioned, had lost both of them. 2021 is when Baylor won the championship. There have been four tournaments without a number one seed in the final four. 1980, 2006, 2011, and as late as 2023. Did you realize last year there was not a number one team in the final four? Number four, UConn. Now, don't get that confused. They were the fourth seed in their region. UConn's national champion, they were the fourth seed. San Diego State. Most people don't remember. San Diego State played in the national championship game last year. They were a five seed. Uh, Miami, University of Miami, the U, football town. They were in the final four last year. And Florida Atlantic, they were a nine seed. They were in the final four last year. Every team, every game they played, they were the underdog. They were the lowest seed. So you go find you a bracket. UConn is, is, has been a name for sure, especially in women's basketball over the, over the course of time. But San Diego State and Florida Atlantic – and football school Miami, those were all in the final four last year. No number one seeds. The high seed was a number four seed. That means 12 teams, number all the ones, all the twos, and all the threes did not make the final four. That's why they need to go get upset copyrighted. Money Motivation of Mike continues to bring you good stuff. Today we brought March Madness. Now, March Madness, like I say, means a lot of things to a lot of people. Today it's all about basketball. Um, continuing on with with our with our series on a lot of things that that are related to sports, but also to related to life as well. And I also was when I started studying this, like I say, I figured I could come up with five or six minutes worth of worth of content. And as you can see, we have gotten long and winded again. And I didn't even cover all the things that I wanted to talk about. So maybe we'll have to come back next year in March Madness and talk about it again. Or maybe they'll blow off our socks in this Final Four here coming up in a couple of weeks, and we'll have to come back and talk about something there. But nevertheless, you can always find us info at, at mx3.vip, and you can contact us info at mx3.vip, or and also find us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at mx3podcast. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to get notified of all of our content which comes out every Monday morning around 9 o'clock. So everyone who's been a part of this show, continue to live your life the right way.